Welcome back. So, this was our last slide and uh, we were discussing about that uh, we usually use very high resolution satellite data to identify uh, the tectonically formed landforms. Now, this uh, photograph is this is a corona satellite photograph which was uh, collected by uh, the US spy satellite long back uh, almost 30 uh, 35 years back uh, and this is uh, this data is available in stereo vision uh, within stereo vision capability and this uh, portion is from uh, the foothill zones of Himalaya in northwest uh, region and the city you can see here well planned is uh, the Chandigarh city. So, if uh, broadly if you classify uh, this landscape then what you have is you have uh, the Indo-Gangetic plain uh, sitting uh, down here and the contact between the Indo-Gangetic plain and the upper Shivaliks or we can say the sub Himalaya is the, the current plate boundary between the Indian and the Eurasian plate on the side. Then we have uh, 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 Intermountain Valley, which is located between the two uh, hill ranges, you are having lesser Himalayas here, and then you are having sub Himalayas. So this is an Intermountain Valley, very much similar to, you must have heard the name of Dehradun, and similar to that you have Kota Dun, then you have Son Dun, and even you have the Kathmandu Valley. So these are the Intermountain Valley, very much similar to uh, what we see uh, along the Himalayan range. So, further detail, uh, uh, just this, this was been done based on the, uh, the uh, very tip, uh, prominent uh, uh, tonal variation and as well as the, uh, the morphology of the terrain. You can see that this portion is very uh, uh, like dissected uh, by, by small streams, you have ridges here. But with this, just looking at uh, the, uh, the 2D view, you will be able to identify the, uh, the major uh, features, geomorphic features, but details you won't be able to pick up here. For example, if I am asking you to identify the active fault in this region, then you won't be able to trace out just to, uh, you will put an, a line here and contact, but the precise location of active fault in this region or in this region or anywhere in this, I'll show a couple of close-ups of this where we have uh, picked up new faults new active faults which were not been mapped earlier and that was done based on uh, the of course this uh, the data with the resolution uh, with, uh, of uh, around 2.5 to 3 meters but uh, this that was been done using the stereo uh, vision um, uh, capabilities. So further, uh, so major classification you can do with uh, uh, any uh, satellite data either it is Landsat or even uh, uh, the panchromatic data, but uh, precise location of active faults I would emphasize here is can be done only if you are able to see uh, the, uh, the terrain in three dimension. Now you can also use uh, uh, other data like uh, uh, satellite topographic mission data and the idea here is that uh, you, you will get an, a digital elevation model. Uh, and this this map is your shaded relief map which shows the uh, the variation in the elevation which has been shown here so you can see uh, like uh, from from zero you are moving ahead uh, into almost like the height of 4500 and more here towards the higher himalayas so you can have digital elevation model and this also helps us again uh, to to identify the landforms on macro scale but on micro scale, uh, you need to have a high resolution uh, satellite data with stereo vision capability. So, of course, you can, you will, with this, you will be able to um, I, um, uh, put some lines, uh, that is the contact between the two prominent geomorphic uh, features um, on, on the larger scale. But uh, to, to the site specific, you need to have uh, the, uh, the high resolution satellite data with stereo 
uh, vision. So uh, mainly uh, our team has worked uh, uh, in this region. So we will be highlighting and showing you what research we have done and what uh, uh, the new findings we have come across uh, during our investigation from uh, Northwest Himalayan region. So with the previous uh, slide which I was showing that we can have the uh, the regional you can, on, on the regional scale you can trace out the the features or the structures and and with the help of further detail uh, like high resolution satellite data you can have further detail mapping of active falls so usually what we do is we use uh, uh, the di digital elevation model for this and uh, based on that we can we prepare high resolution uh, uh, geomorphic map. This I'm talking about high resolution because uh, we have we we will be able to put the the precise location of active fault. So this bold lines which you see here is the precise location of active faults. And this line is again we are looking we are showing the plan view, but uh, this is related to the features which we are going to learn. Uh, uh, that what are the all features which helps us in identifying uh, and putting those line as an active fault. So we have like here a uh, lot of symbols have been given like triangular facets. So you will learn about what it, what do you mean by triangular facet, active flexures, active folding, inferred fault. So those locations where we are not having a prominent exposure of, on the surface of, of the active fault trace or the landforms with the help of which we can demarcate the fault line then we put dash line here or discontinuous line saying that those are the inferred faults and then the map also shows that the sense of movement so mostly this faults which we have marked are thrust faults so now it, it uh, should be clear to you that what when i am talking when i'm saying the thrust fault then it should immediately come in your mind that this is a low angle reverse fault and which which are developed during in compressional tectonic environment and then another symbol which shows uh, the very much similar to what we were talking about the transform faults or the strike slip faults so this is your strike slip fault which is occurring here and then the the sense of movement has been shown here so this becomes your right lateral strike slip fault and again with the help of what we have discussed in the previous lecture that with the help of offset of streams formation of linear valleys uh, location of the sack points and all that or shutter ridges we can uh, demarcate or characterize this fault in terms of its sense of movement whereas these are the faults which are all thrust faults uh, with this block is up and this is down here so and along with that what we have uh, included here is different uh, uh, surfaces so what we learned in the previous uh, and discussed in the previous lecture that we need to chronology of the uh, the landforms that is uh, the quaternary landscape and this is exactly what it shows here so you have t0 is the terrace so what are the terraces and all that you will learn uh, uh, quickly in coming lectures but uh, in short quick uh, uh, I, I'll, I'll briefly I'll explain that if you have a section here for example then what you will be able to see that we are having almost like one two three four and five so you have something like this okay one two three four and five terraces and then it goes like up here okay so you have this is your youngest one t0 this is your t1 this is your t2 t3 t4 and then uh, further one more is your t5 so you have but here we we see is mainly uh, the now uh, up to T4. So we have uh, these are the terraces or the steps which are developed uh, along the uh, uh, the river, but on on one of the bank here. And other side we don't have the terraces. But usually uh, um, uh, we we may come across mostly that we have the paired terraces. So we will have the terraces on other side also. So T0, T1, T, T2, T3, and T4. So T0 is the youngest one here. So this is uh, uh, this part I'll discuss later that why this is younger and why this is older, uh, but this is the youngest one which is sitting close to the riverbed. So you have uh, uh, 
uh, this four terraces or oh, sorry five terraces including uh, the T0 are all displaced. Hence, this is also an important part which one has to identify uh, and the and the best location for trenching is also important when we see the youngest displacement uh, on the surface. So, youngest uh, uh, landform if it is displaced then those those areas are the uh, the potential site for trenching. So, the so this includes a detailed uh, uh, geomorphic map uh, with the with the landforms here we have uh, which have been marked here with different symbols as well as the fault lines. So, this uh, will easily uh, help uh, in understanding uh, uh, that uh, uh, whether the fault has remained active uh, since past or not because this is uh, this is one of the basic uh, uh, interpretation or, or you can say that you can uh, take up this as an uh, uh, the, the first step uh, before you go in field and start mapping the active uh, tectonic related landforms. Now, further you can also play with the data, you can generate the, uh, uh, the digital elevation model and with the help of SRTM data. So, what we have done here that we used uh, uh, SRTM data and uh, uh, we generated shaded relief map and with the help of again the uh, uh, um, uh, DM, we have draped this DM on the top of the uh, or, or uh, on the on DM we have draped the shaded relief map to get the uh, topography. And in this topography you can see clearly this is the, the same location which I was showing uh, in the previous uh, slide. So, you have uh, uh, this portion as well as this one and this, uh, these are the lesser Himalayan rocks which we or the hills which are been exposed. So, the next slide is exactly uh, this area which we are, I am showing. So, you can have a 3D perspective view of this. So, you have the flat area and then flat area is getting abutted uh, against this. And so, roughly at, uh, at first instance you can easily mark that this is some uh, boundary which could be active could not be inactive also ok, but uh, the other information which will come in with the help of uh, the, the satellite data interpretation and the landforms which you will demarcate you can fix up that whether this is an active fault or not. Now, uh, you can even uh, create and fly through this uh, which can help you in understanding the, the landscape. So, you have one fault here, another is passing through this valley here and third one is going here and this is what I was talking about the, the formation of the linear valley and all that ok. So, this of course, the resolution is not so high, but to some extent you will be able to pick up very easily the on, on a larger scale. Even this, uh, uh, this is the, the, the part which uh, for is from here, uh, the, the strike slip fault which we picked up and we, we the close up of that if we look at then the strikes default run somewhere over here. Let us see what uh, the movie is telling us ok. So, you have the thrust faults over here and then you have the, the strikes default which is sitting along here in this line ok. And then these are the offset of streams you can see these are the offset of streams you have seen and the linear valley which has been uh, formed here ok. So, you can do a lot of thing and you can have a lot of fun using uh, the satellite data and uh, with the help of uh, the softwares which are uh, uh, available uh, with us, but of course, if you, if they are available in your labs uh, at your university or institutions, you can use those softwares and try to uh, build up such uh, uh, maps or the images. Okay. So, this again I, I as I told that we will uh, give will be uh, we are planning to give a, a exclusive one or two lectures particularly on this that how you will develop, how you can drape this uh, data and then play with the with the data using different softwares ok. So, another uh, 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 data from, but this this data is a Landsat data draped on on the satellite uh, radar topographic mission data that is your SRTM data which has again uh, helped us in putting uh, and preparing some detailed maps ok. So, this portion we have marked as in bold line. So, 
so this is your active fault but this portion we are not sure so these are all inferred because this the contact between the two that is your uh, the intergangetic plane and the uh, upper chevalic hills or sub himalaya is the plate boundary hence this is definitely an active but the uh, to know the uh, the the ancient earthquakes okay uh, it it will be difficult to precisely dig uh, along this line because uh, the portion is uh, erosional because the reason for the erosion is the dynamic nature of the uh, the system here you have very uh, dynamic fluvial system which exist in this region so it keeps on eroding but some places they are well preserved so we we usually try to pick up the well preserved portion and try to uh, uh, put the trenches and uh, to see the section and the deformation preserved in the sediments mainly so one is the landforms we have identified and then we want to go into the go back into the history and see that how many earthquakes have been triggered along this fault line so we have uh, the triangular facet here which are been marked so you can imagine that not the what so called very well planned city of chandigarh is sitting just exactly almost few kilometers hardly 2 to 3 kilometers from the most one of the most active uh, uh, zone in india so uh, this is what uh, uh, we usually use okay but uh, we have the uh, the the two images of the same area okay but taken by different uh, uh, at, uh, from different angle by the same ca aircraft okay so this this when you view using uh, 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 stereo scope you will be able to see uh, the uh, the the whole terrain in three dimension okay and that is what we call uh, the stereo vision uh, capabilities okay so uh, remote sensing is uh, the one of the basic step for towards uh, getting into the detail mapping and all that okay so analysis of high resolution satellite data either you are using landsat aerial photos satellite photos satellite images low sun angle aerial oblique photos etc you can use but as i told that uh, the landsat you don't have uh, with the stereo vision so mostly if you are having the uh, the low sun angle aerial uh, oblique photographs then that can also help you in identifying the uh, the features but this is going to be a very expensive uh, process or uh, expensive affair but you can have the satellite photos or satellite images high resolution with stereo vision so what you see the common here is that you have this drainage here this drainage is the same this portion of the land is here is the same and that based on that you can identify and the arrows which have been marked here are showing the trace of the active fault so even if you are having the uh, uh, the capability of using uh, with the naked eye you you can do that so what best you can do you can place your one photograph here another photograph here and separate this portion using a cardboard so that your left eye okay so you are you viewing uh, this image with your uh, left eye and this image by your right eye okay if you can do that you will be generating a pseudo uh, 3d image in your brain and that will give you the stereo vision okay. there is another one uh, a photograph of uh, the pinjor uh, region uh, which shows the locations of the active fault here actually this is one here which has been seen on this side also but again all this are the stereo photographs now with the help of that uh, several features which we were been able to pick up uh, likewise uh, here one is this one another one is which goes here but with this of course because now i am when i am showing you may agree you may not agree with me that this is a fault line but when you see that the that this landform because you will say no i i don't agree because this uh, the tonal uh, tone of this uh, surface land surface is same as almost like this okay but it has 
it, it has been broken here or displaced along this line. So, the, but no, because I know this, I have seen this terrain in three dimension. So, I can uh, confidently say that this is up and this is down. Okay, And there is a fault line which goes somewhere over here. And similarly for the case of here, this one, uh, there is a beautiful uh, squarish building here. You have a smaller square here and then you have a larger one and there is a fault here which runs across this one. Okay. But you will not, you may, may say that no, this is this is almost same, but when you see this in three dimension, that what uh, I am I'm trying to emphasize that if you see this terrain in three dimension, then and then only you will be able to identify the displaced surfaces. Okay. So, this portion is up here, and this is again down, there is another fault, uh, another one which runs somewhere over here and third one in this area here. So, the arrows which have been shown here, uh, which, which shows the, the location of uh, this fault. So, these are the, uh, the location of the, uh, the city here and then you have Jajara river which is flowing this side and then you are having Koshelia river and this portion is your famous Mughal garden which is sitting almost around 20-25 kilometers from Chandigarh and which was constructed on the on the active fault without having proper understanding. Okay, so this mistake was done way back in 17th century, but similar mistakes have been done in recent years also. So these are the location of the the towns you have, and the location of the active fault traces. Okay, so so many here. Okay, so you have those uh, arrows are indicating the the uh, the fault lines here. Now, the features uh, which you will uh, be learning slowly uh, in other lectures also, uh, but this is one very prominent because uh, this portion what we see here is the scarp, the darker face here is the scarp, this side is having the, the escarpment and you are having this side is down, this is up and this is back tilted, this is back tilted in this direction. So, photograph which was been taken from here you can see this one. So, this portion uh, where I have put the arrow is this surface. Okay. So, this is back tilted and the fault runs somewhere here okay, in the front of that. Okay. And this is typical of, of a thrust fault. So, you have uh, the fault line. This is the fault line on the surface and fault may be somewhere deeper in the side. Okay. So, if you have, the, you have to draw the section here, then you will see something topography like this. Okay. So, you have a fault here. So, this is a typical of a uh, thrust fault. So, back tilting of Pinjore surface along a tertiary succession at Ghatiwala village, which is tilted almost like 8 degree due east. And then you have uh, this portion, which I was talking, you can see that they have what th this side is up. So, the photograph has been taken from here, this point viewing this side. So, you have you can see the uh, the big step what has been termed as and this is the, the fault line which runs here. So, I will come maybe I am having these slides later on I will talk about this, but usually the Mughals were having uh, like uh, they, 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 they usually have the fascination to put a, a, a water pathway in the center uh, portion of the um, of the, uh, the gardens which they do, do those gardens which they constructed. If even if you go in Kashmir or in Delhi, you will find such uh, features which are extremely common. So, they will have a pathway. So, to, to give a flow to this uh, uh, water pathway, the higher elevation in this region was been selected and this higher elevation was the was the false scarp and which exists now, which is still there as a false scarp. Okay. So, height of the scarp plate is around 12 meters and reduces to about 8 to 10 meters uh, in the south and 1.5 to 2 meters in the north. This garden was constructed using this high scarp around 400 years back in 17th century. So, fault here uh, runs somewhere at the base and they, were, they never had an idea that they have constructed this uh, 
the monument or this, this garden structure on exactly on the false cup. And this is outside the, uh, uh, the garden somewhere over here, uh, where people keep on just passing through this area, but never had an understanding that what exactly is this uh, undulation or the warp which has been seen, but they just go through and local people never uh, does not know about that this is an active false cup. Even this was not known uh, uh, like a few decades back. Okay. Now, another technique what we use uh, other than using the high resolution satellite photographs, uh, we use aerial photographs and this is uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the fall traces which have been marked. This, is a, this area is from uh, Gujarat, Kutch region. So, uh, initially we we mark the landforms and the active fault traces using corona satellite photographs in this region and this exercise was way back uh, was way back uh, uh, was done way back in 2000 before 2001 uh, earthquake of bhuj and we did uh, aerial survey uh, during 2000 uh, that is after 2001 bhuj earthquake and we wanted to map the features which we marked as an active fault but uh, fortunately, this fall did not move. Uh, the earthquake was blind and this fall did not move. So, still this region is, has a potential of triggering large magnitude earthquake in near future. So, this uh, the photograph which uh, is been sh seen here is an uh, oblique uh, uh, aerial photograph and photograph was taken uh, from here. Our flight was in this direction we were moving and what you see is uh, this ridge has been seen here, this one and then another one is this one here. Uh, so, and the, the dam which has been seen here, you do not see the dam here because this photograph was taken uh, before the, uh, the construction of dam. So, sometime using old photographs is uh, extremely uh, helpful. Uh, in identifying the landform because over the time the the areas uh, where are, are modified so you can you can just say in the in the, the timeline of 10, 10 years or 20 years there will be a lot of uh, 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 like area will be encroached by uh, the the development um, and and may be modified because of the erosion also so old photographs can help you in locating the features uh, which were intact at that time. Okay, so this is this is one advantage using old photographs. So this area doesn't show the location of this dam, but the landforms are definitely preserved here. So this portion is here. So this scarp is for a false scarp runs over here. This portion. Then another one is from this side here, this part which has been shown here, and what you see is uh, this portion. This portion of the, the contact between the ridge and the, the flat area is a backdrop here. Okay. So, you can see those ridges over here. So, this hill that is the Kutch uh, uh, mainland uh, region has been seen here. Okay. And then flat area which is dissected and abutting along the, the, uh, the further uh, low lying alluvial plain is this one. So, this sharp contact is your active fault scarps. Again, this road you do not see here, it is uh, uh, it was constructed later on. So, similar uh, things you can use and another photograph from this part, this is Jawahar Nagar, where you can see the, uh, or the, or the, the flat uh, surface getting abutted against the low lying alluvial plain. So, I will stop here and uh, I will continue in the next lecture. Thank you so much.